after I compared the best headphones under $150, many people asked me to increase the budget a little bit. So in this video, I'm comparing the best and top rated headphones for $300 or less. Now, of course, the price is gonna vary a little bit in your country and currency, but we have closed back and open back offerings from a few different companies. So we're starting with the Audio-Technica ATH M70X. If we take a good look at it here and on the head, this is the premium option from Audio-Technica. And we also have the Focal Listen Pro. I've also got some up close shots of these. So hopefully that'll help you see what they actually look like. Moving on this sort of rundown, we have the AKG K702. So you can see that on my head there. From Biodynamic, we have both the DT700 and 900 Pro X. If you've seen my channel before, you've definitely seen me talk about those before. And finally, we have the VSX Essentials, which combines these headphones with some modeling software to recreate a bunch of different studio spaces, sound systems, and even other headphones. So how I thought this would go is that I would line up all of the headphones, list out and compare a bunch of specs, talk about maybe the frequency range, the impedance, and this is the normal way to do a review, and sometimes it's quite helpful, but at this price range, I felt that things got a lot more interesting and deserved a little bit more detail than just listing out some specifications and trying to pick the best out of the bunch that way. So to get to the point, and what is my recommendation? For studio work and recording, just about any of these headphones will do. They will all do the job and there's nothing wrong with them. But when it comes to critical listening, so mixing, music production, mastering, the VSX Essentials is by far my favorite headphone out of the bunch. And I wanted to spend some time talking about why these impressed me so much and why they're sort of shaking up the pro audio scene at the minute. To be transparent, I have received some of these headphones for free over the years, and most recently, Stephen Slate Audio sent me the VSX Essentials to test out. After testing them out for a few months, I decided I wanted to share my experience because lots of people have been asking me what I thought about this system, and I was really curious to try it out myself. They were happy to pay me for my time reviewing and testing it, and this also let me buy a bunch of other headphones to compare it to, just to make sure that VSX was indeed my favorite in this price range. And on top of that, I get to keep 100% control of my video, as always. You might have the same experience as me, you try this on and you just love it, or you might be unsure about it, so you don't have to worry. The VSX comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So in the interest of being honest, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you that any of these other headphones are bad. They're all good headphones and they do their job, but I was very surprised at how little changed when you move from say $100, $150 up closer to $300. And a good example of this are the M70X headphones, which despite getting a little bit of metal in the design, they're not as well built as the 50s or the 40s, which would have saved you a lot of money. They also don't feel even close to as comfortable, at least on my head, and I prefer the sound balance of these uh, in all ways, better bass, better mids, and treble. So I was asked again to test out the AKG K702. I tried it out last time, and many people said that I probably just didn't have an amplifier that was powerful enough to drive them. Well, I tried these using a Lynx Helo and a merging uh, Anubis interface, which are, you know, have plenty power to drive these. And I found the same thing as last time. While these headphones are very comfortable, very lightweight, and have an incredibly complicated design to try and make them fit lots of heads. I mean, if this ever breaks on you, you're in trouble. I found the same issue as last time, and that is a lack of bass. Now, I do not like bass boosted systems. I like a sound system that's balanced. These felt like there was like a 10 dB cut of everything below 150 hertz. I just couldn't hear bass notes consistently. I could hear no thump or thud from a kick drum. So if you want, a slightly spacious pair of headphones and you're just working with the mid and the treble, these might do, but I'm working on material that goes all the way down to the, to the sub bass and these are just not gonna do it for that particular purpose. The next one I'm gonna look at is the Focal Listen Pro. Now these were built quite well. There's a lot of clamping force here. So on my head, and I'll, I think I'll put my 
head, you know, circumference up here or something, but they're very tight on my head. The sound on these was incredibly focused. It really feels like it's right there in your head. So if you were tracking, you know, maybe you're a guitarist, just want to throw those on your head or a drummer, these would probably be great. But I just felt that they weren't open enough to make critical mixing and mastering decisions. However, Focal probably wins with having the best case. Several of these come with a case. Uh, but the Focal one was just excellent quality and came with a bunch of different cables. And I also felt that the cables they came with felt very sturdy and very high quality. So there's some good things there, but they're just not what I'm looking for in a mixing headphone system. So next up, we have the Biodynamic DT700 and 900 Pro X. And while these were uh, previously my favorite headphones in these price points, and there's nothing particularly wrong with them, I just think they don't offer anything else that the VSX can't do. I think the VSX can sound better than those just as headphones, and these don't come with any sort of modeling or extra software attached to them. Compared to all the others, if I remove VSX, these do have better bass than say the Focals, the Audio Technica, uh, and they are very comfortable. Like these pads, the way they fit around my ears, I've got no complaints there. They are a little bit heavy though. So after maybe an hour of listening, this headband can start to get a little bit heavy, but comfort is so personal. I mean, with the Focals, I find that these clamp onto my ears and are uncomfortable, but I know that there'd be someone else that could say they could use those for three or four hours and they'd be fine. So comfort is very, very subjective. And although we talked about them earlier, the M70X, these were the most confused of the bunch for me. I think they're far more expensive than they should be. They have included metal here, which gives the illusion or impression of strength, but the joints are still plastic, so I don't have any confidence that this is going to be any harder wearing or tougher than the cheaper ones. But more importantly, I couldn't get these to clamp on my head well, so my ear presses on the inside bit here and it doesn't seal around the bottom, and that might be why I don't really like the balance and the sound of these headphones. And since we're doing a bit of a comparison, I'll just finish off with the VSX. As far as comfort and weight's concerned, I've got no issues here. They, they fit me, the ear fits inside there, they clamp on nice and comfortably. But the one thing I think they could do to really step up the system would be to provide a few more cables in maybe different styles or different qualities, because many of the other headphones come with a few options here, such as coiled cables or straight cables, whereas the VSX comes with one cable, but I feel that if they threw just another one in the case, it's a good hard carry case as well, it would make it even more versatile. I want to talk about why the VSX impressed me so much. For a little bit of context, I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to studio monitoring, and while I've used a whole range of different equipment over the years, the stuff I use in my day job uh, tends to be you know, mastering grade converters, high-end audio interfaces, that all runs into a fully analog pair of PSIs. My room is treated and I've gone to great lengths to try and make it sound good, including using room correction software, and the VSX still sounds more balanced and has better imaging than that system. And that really bothered me for a while because I love loudspeakers, but these are truly fascinating. So how this works is that the VSX system pairs their headphones, which sound great on their own, with software, which you can run inside your DAW or just system-wide. So I use a program called SoundSource, so I just have this running all the time. And it's this software, along with some clever design, that allows the headphones to replicate or model different studio environments or loudspeakers, spaces, or even other headphones. This completely opens up these headphones and creates a deep and spatial sound. But most importantly, with great imaging and a lot of customization. We've all heard spatial audio, it's all over the place. This isn't that. This is spatial and focused, so it really does sound like there's loudspeakers in front of you. Most importantly, you can tune and adjust this, so it's customizable with EQ, depth controls, and even customization based on your ear shape. They highlight the importance of getting these fitting perfectly and then learning one or two spaces very well. It doesn't come with all of the possible studio spaces, although you could buy more of them later if you wanted to. And this is the part of the review that I never believed when I heard other people say it, so you're kind of just going to have to take my word for it or try it out. But when you get these set up right, and the setup is really important, and you, you pick a space and listen to it for a few minutes, the headphones truly disappeared on my head. The number of times that I've had this on my head, I've been listening to music for a while, and I reach for my monitor controller, 
because my brain thinks that my main monitors are on. And that is, you know, that's a little bit embarrassing, but if you try this and get it set up right and you have monitors sitting in front of you, it really is sort of bizarre how close it sounds. And that for me was the bit where I realized I was sold on this system. Every other headphone here, you know, as much as I like working in headphones, I always feel like at some point I must take those off and I have to reference on my monitors. Whereas with these ones, I'm just sitting there happily working away, enjoying myself. And I've, I've forgotten that I'm even using headphones. I'm just mixing. And I know other people have talked about this, but one of the most impressive features of VSX is how it models the low end. It gives you this deep and transient low end that I haven't heard on anything besides big sound systems. So of course, it's never gonna hit you in the chest. It's not, you know, there's not a subwoofer hidden in there, but the sound on the ears is this consistent, fully shaped bass. While they model the sound of the room, you're not dealing with those big room modes and nodes that are gonna cut your bass down by say 10 dB at 60 Hertz or something. So to summarize, because the bass is consistent here, you're not fighting the mix and your room, you're just fighting the mix. So if you can get the mix sounding good in here, there's a good chance that it will translate to other places, provided that you've set this up right and you've referenced some good tracks and learned how these sound. That's everything from me today. If you wanna ask me anything about any of the headphones, ask away in the comment section down below and I'll try to get back to you with as much detail as possible. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.